Hello everybody, uh, this is Mas Spankop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today I would like to show you a HP SureStore 320GB DLT backup tape auto switcher auto loader. Um, it's uh, a single unit that I brought home. Uh, it's normally bond together with a twin, so it can run other two times the uh, the rated capacity or it can run a rate zero or rate one whatever it wants um, but uh, let's take a look at the station so this is the front panel of the uh, tape station um, it is rather big and as you can see that's a bottle of wine for size comparison uh, the unit had a rather rough trip when it was thrown out. has a lot of dents, scratches, some stuff are bent. The front is broken. Uh, overall condi condition is not good. If we uh, take a look inside, you can see we have one tape sitting in the uh, bay. And inside here we can see a we have a auto loader uh, mechanism that can drive back and forth. We have a internal magazine in here, these two spots, and over here we have the uh, the drive itself. So uh, let's see if this thing powers up. So with power on we can see there is a flashing green LED in the back of the unit. I can turn it on here on the front. Okay, seems that the auto loader went to its home position. Sounds like floppy or tape drive head test. As you can see up here the uh, display writes not ready self test. Um, I read prior in the manual that this uh, self-test is uh, three separate tests that runs for a total of 30 seconds. So let's see. So far we have green LED. No error messages but hmm, not ready. I will uh, let this run for a while and uh, get back to you. So now about 10 minutes later it's uh, still <laughs> running its uh, self-test and it says the same uh, not ready, status haven't changed. Uh, I have not been able to bypass this uh, by pressing any of these four keys as described in the manual but no combination seems to work. Um, the door itself is uh, is now locked while it's turned on, but uh, I think it's uh, safe to say that something is uh, not passing the self-test. Uh, but according to manual, it should have given a it should have given a uh, error message within or after the thirty seconds had passed. Try power it up one last time. Uh, same result. I guess uh, we will uh, tear this apart, see what is inside. With the top cover off, uh, the first thing we can see here is a uh, sensor for the uh, front door. And there is a sensor for uh, checking the uh, locking mechanism uh, for the door. If we close the door, we can see that the first sensor is now in an off position. The next thing we see here is the uh, x-axis uh, for the auto loader. Down here we can see the drive itself. Uh, we have some uh, flat band uh, communication up to the front panel. There is uh, power for three steppers. Or I'm not sure what kind of motor that really is right now, but we will see later. Um, up here we can see that Cards uh, at the back, like a power supply, 
SCSI interface and so on is sitting in a uh, like optional uh, slot in uh, manner. If we take a look at the back, we can see here that we have a uh, we have the drive itself sitting in the left side, and then then we have the SCSI interface here and power supply. But uh, it seems that uh, I will have to take this uh, pretty much total apart to get anywhere nearer inside of it. it. Seems to be divided into a module of the front loading, the the auto loader, and then uh, the rest down here for itself. So this was probably the last time we would see it run. Uh, I could power it up when it's taken apart, but I'm not sure what kind of operation we would get out get out of that. From the marker inside the uh, unit, we can see its uh, power ratings. Um, for anything that it says auto ranging in uh, power max, so maybe a fancy way of telling it's just a switch mode power supply that does not have a high idle current standby. Um, you can see down here date of manufacture. Uh, 11 month of uh, 2000, made in Germany. Um, so, prying this uh, cabinet open, as you can see, it's just completely split. Uh, everything was uh, set into the sides uh, and the bottom with small um, login plates. And this is now what the drive looks like. Spread out on the table, we have the front door with the, the docking unit, the loader, uh, power supply, SCSI board, uh, motherboard of the uh, unit, as we can see on the on the CMOS, it's dated 15-10-1999. And over here on the drive unit itself, we have the uh, black box over here, which is the cartridge. And it will pull in the tape into a separate uh, cylinder and drum in the drive itself it's all encapsulated in some hard plastic um, the power for this is just a standard molex connector and uh, it has a SCSI interface directly out so this is actually a separate uh, SCSI tape drive from the unit itself over here the motherboard and SCSI card this seems to just be a separate system and this is a separate drive. So maybe with the right uh, SCSI driver or SCSI card, SCSI card I could actually hook this drive up to uh, my PC. Let's see if we can get this to run again. So with everything rearranged a bit so we can see the front of the uh, panel over here. Uh, let's try to turn the power on. It seems like the auto loader is unable to find its home position now. And as we can see, the uh, not ready self test uh, status is the same as always. Uh, not much else is happening. The CPU on the uh, main board of the uh, auto loader is a Silox Z80 CPU. And it has a single uh, ROM um, IC down here. Okay, so I managed to force feed the uh, the auto loader cassette uh, loading bay here with a uh, tape. I had to override the, this little uh, motor that uh, drives a locking mechanism uh, with just eight volt DC straight to it, and I was able to. Uh, Move, move the lever up and so I could push the tape in pressing out the locking, right locking pins and so on. So um, I will try to turn it on and uh, see what happens now. The uh, bay over here, um, the auto loader itself is completely fucked up by now. Um, it has a uh, photodiode down here uh, at the bottom um, which drove along a rail at the bottom of the split cabinet I showed you uh, earlier. 
So this is uh, not able to find its position anymore. So, um, power on. Okay, in soft test mode. Um, drive does not seem to uh, do anything. Stays in the same test mode as always. No other LEDs blinking on. No indications of anything going to happen. And as we can see, the not ready self test keeps going. So, um, as of now, this seems pretty bust. Um, about the drive being ra run uh, in, uh, in a standalone mode, uh, I would have to reverse engineer this uh, signal cable uh, that goes to the uh, loading bay and how it would take in the tape and so on. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to spend any time on that. With the drive separated from the uh, metal frame that it was sitting in up here, um, somebody might recognize the form factor of this because this is uh, the uh, old 8 inch hard drive form factor that uh, that one came in uh, and if we take a look at the label at the front it actually says it's a quantum and uh, people might remember they had a quantum Bigfoot hard drive. Uh, it was a five and a quarter inch hard drive. Around, uh, it was sub one gigabyte back then. And that was uh, a, a very popular cheap uh, hard drive, um, but <laughs> it was also uh, prone to failure uh, prior to its uh, lifetime. Um, but this drive was actually produced by Quantum Corporation before Maxter bought up the, the company. So um, the, it was the Maxter Quantum Bigfoot hard drive. Um, but this is actually a tape drive from back when they were a separate company. Um, the DLT uh, tape, uh, the direct linear tape technology was uh, discontinued uh, a few years later. Uh, to the production of this unit. But um, interesting, um, let's uh, get further down into this and see what's inside. With the back cover removed from the drive, we can see here see the exposed uh, PCB. Um, it has uh, a wide range of uh, inputs all around the, uh, the board. Up here we have uh, says right protect uh, SDL. These are uh, sensors sitting up at the tape, uh, so you can see if that uh, pin on the tape uh, itself is flicked for right protection. There's a connector for motor B and motor A, one for the cassette and one for the internal um, the internal storage for the tape when it's being read or written to. Um, I think we have uh, the motor, motor controllers uh, on this side of the board. And if we take a look on the other side, as you have here, we have the SCSI connector. So this is probably uh, the SCSI controller. Or this is. We have some uh, buffer RAM. These four chips. Um, there's a ceramic heatsink mounted on these two um, ICs. So I'm not sure what these exactly are. Uh, over here we have a Intel S80C196 microcontroller. Down here we have the uh, power input section. Um, this connector uh, we have over here is uh, the data connection to the to the unit itself, to the, to the read and write head. Over here we have different uh, motor, uh, sm smaller motor uh, connectors for the um, locking mechanisms and uh, the one for catching the uh, eye on the start of the tape. Over here are some inputs for the uh, peripherals that are mounted on the uh, frame itself. 
So this uh, has to do with external control of how when to read that tape and how to load it or unload it and such. If we take a look inside the underneath the PCB, there are two motors. We have uh, one for the cassette and the one for the internal store, storage compartment. These are the same uh, 24 pole uh, motors that were used in almost every drive from this age. As I don't want to tear this uh, drive completely apart, uh, I have just uh, mounted the back side again with the board and we can take a look at the front. Um, this uh, clear plastic cover comes off with uh, two small clips, so it's possible to access the, uh, the cassette. Um, I'm not sure how much uh, service was needed on these, but as we can see down here, uh, okay, that's very hard to see. There is a gripper mechanism to catch the start of the tape, which now has its lid open here. And it goes all around here, uh, up to the reading head. Uh, that's behind this bar and goes around. We have a metal band here going into the uh, internal uh, cassette. If we take a look up here, we can see that the uh, reading head will be driven in and out by this little motor. And that about shows uh, what there is of interesting things to see about this drive uh, without taking further apart. I would like to keep this and maybe see if I can get it connected to an old PC and read the tape or maybe I'll just sell it. But uh, thanks for watching.